once you get your head around the idea that everything in a computer has to be in binary, so everything has got to be a sequence of zeros and ones, you might start thinking, well, how does a computer do letters then? And the first solution we had is where we came up with the idea that a particular sequence of zeros and ones could equal a letter. So for example, the one there could equal, equal the capital letter A. And then if we look at the binary for that, one more than that in binary uh, could be letter B and so on and so on. And these, this is called a character set. And it's all the characters or the letters and numbers that a computer can understand. That's what a character set is. Um, and our original character set that was widely used and was very popular was called ASCII. And here it is on the right hand side. And it was fine for, you know, for our first implementation of, uh, of converting binary to characters. It had seven bits available for each character, which meant that we had 128 different characters that we could choose from. Um, and that came with a particular problem, because once you've done all the capital letters and all the lowercase letters for our alphabets, all the numbers, and we do some important punctuation, uh, like things like exclamation marks and hashtags, actually, we don't have a lot of space left. So that was fine for our first implementation, but what about, for example, like ASCII had a dollar sign, but it didn't have a pound sign, and it didn't have things like this letter here, which is used quite a lot in French, and what about the O with the umlaut above it as well, which is used in German, didn't have that either. And so the next solution was to use something called extended ASCII, and that had eight bits available to it. It had a few more characters in, which catered for sort of Western languages, like, uh, like French and German, uh, and languages like that. Um, but again, it didn't didn't quite solve all our problems. Extended ASCII had eight bits in it, so that meant it had 256 characters to play with. Um, but then, what about this? What about this language here? What about Chinese? If you went to China and you picked up a newspaper, it could have up to about well two three thousand characters in it that you'd be expected to read. So we can't fit that in 256 characters, can we? And what about other languages as well? Because you know the world's bigger than that. What about Arabic? What about the alphabet that they use? And so a bigger, much more well thought out solution was needed. And that was called Unicode. And that's something that's used mostly in uh, websites today is this Unicode. Now, every character in Unicode can actually between, be between one and four bytes. I mean, technically it can be larger than that, but that's the most common in, um, implementation. And it's actually gives us access to billions of different characters, which is more than we think we'll ever need, which let us do quite frivolous things. So for example, we've got a whole set of characters now, a whole character set dedicated to these things here, emojis. So you can thank Unico for the spread of the laughing, crying face emoji. So if you're looking for the number of characters each set can represent, each character set can represent, then ASCII is the worst. Extended ASCII gets better and Unicode is the best, but it's not all good because Unicode takes up more storage space per character than either of the other two. And that's all you need to know about characters. If you found that video useful, please hit the like button and hit subscribe to the channel. Keep learning and revising more computer science by clicking on the videos linked here.